Okay, so this is a video to show you around the spreadsheet for 1920 tax return. So I'll start from the very beginning. We've got the instruction pages here, or page here. I've got my disclaimer at the top saying basically it's your responsibility to complete this correctly. Um, I can't take any, obviously can't take any responsibility for the way that you complete the spreadsheet. Um, and therefore the numbers that you submit. So instructions, follow the step-by-step -step guide below to complete all the info for your self-assessment. So that's this bit down here, that's all your step-by-step -step guide. Only fill the cells that have been filled with the green colour, like this one, um, and you should be okay. Um, I've put a load of formulas and sums in here, so if you, if you stick to the green boxes, you hopefully won't break any of those formulas. Um, some cells I've put a comment in and you can see that by this little red tag up in the corner if you hover over the cell then you can see the the comment pop up. I've put a silly little joke in there just to sh so that you can test it. Don't touch any other cells you might upset a formula I've already said. Where the text is blue or purple, purple just means you've clicked on it before, blue means that you haven't. Um, so it's blue or purple and underlined it means that it's linked to another document or page. So in this case I've got given you a test one to, to click and it takes you to a silly picture and then you can click back to the instructions and it'll take you back here. Unless you're familiar with Excel I would advise you just ignore these tabs at the bottom um, and just use these links to get around the spreadsheet. Um, it, it guides you where you need to go, so if you're not comfortable with Excel, just ignore the, the tabs. If you need any further support or you'd like to make a suggestion for improvement, please let me know by posting it in the group and tag me um, so that I can see it. So if we start on the step-by-step -step guide, uh, the first thing to do is to put your name in the box here and I will literally put my name in there and if you see it has already updated to that box on the top and that has done it throughout the entire spreadsheet um, just so that you know if you print any of this stuff out and give it to your accountant then they can see who it belongs to or you can see who it belongs to. Number two, read the bookkeeping rules and make sure you remind yourself frequently if this is all new info to you. So if we go to bookkeeping 101, we have got all of this information here. Um, I've tried to give you enough information that you can understand, but I've tried not to overload you with information. Obviously, I'm a qualified accountant, so all of this comes easily to me you guys aren't and so I, I don't want to overwhelm you with information you don't need to know in order to do this. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible but let me know if I'm still overcomplicating it. So you'll be using a system of accounting called cash accounting. That just means you're accounting for a transaction on the date the money changes hands, not based on order dates. So for example a customer takes an order for £25 makes an order for £25 on the 27th of April and you deliver it and receive the money on the 7th of May, you'll account for that transaction on the 7th of May when you've received the money, not the 27th of April. Um, yeah, that's what I've already said. Support. Uh, you should find all of the information in this spreadsheet or in one of the links that I've provided. But if you need any specific help on any, on anything, please join the free Facebook group called Self Assessment for Avon Reps and post your question in the group. Um, if I haven't seen it immediately, just tag me in the comments if you haven't tagged me in the question and hopefully I'll see it. Um, and then there's a link there to the Facebook group. Loads of information in the Facebook group and it's all organised in the learning units section. So anything that isn't here in the spreadsheet, the chances are there will be something in the learning learning units. 
in the Facebook group. So it's worth having a quick look in there before posting your question because we do get a lot of repeat questions um, and a lot of it I have already um, looked at and created posts in the learning units. So it's worth having a quick look there. I've provided some relevant HMRC links. So we've got self-employed records. That's just like how long you've got to keep things. Self-assessment tax returns, understanding your self-assessment bill and expenses if you're self-employed. That's just for info. Um, it's worth having a quick look so that you can understand and you can see what the government themselves say on it rather than just blindly trusting what I've told you. <laughs> Um, it's worth getting a folder to partner the spreadsheet to keep all of your physical um, invoices, receipts, etc. in. You can keep everything electronically now. HMRC, I'm more than happy for you to keep everything electronically. So if you've got a scanner or you've got an app on your phone that you can use to scan everything in and keep it all safely in a folder on your computer, then you can do. I would advise you keep a backup because your computer corrupting or your hard drive dying is not a good enough excuse from HMRC's point of view. So make sure you keep a backup of everything if you keep it purely electronically. Bank account. If you're able to get a bank account that's solely ded dedicated to your Avon business, I would advise it. It doesn't need to be a business bank account, generally because there are costs involved in running a business bank account. But I started off literally just with a NatWest account, a um, personal NatWest account, and I just used it for my Avon stuff. Um, I've now got a Monzo account because um, it's a little bit easier to, to deal with from my phone. Um, so the idea behind this is that it'd be easier to keep track of your Avon transactions, but it'll also remind you to keep your Avon business finances separate from your, your personal finances. So for example, when you make a purchase of Avon product for your own personal use, if you transfer the cost of that from your personal bank account to your Avon bank account and almost treat it like a sale at cost, then it helps you keep all your money in, in check. There is a post in the Facebook group that discusses this in more detail. Um, so I've written that there and provided you with the link. Tracking your cash sales. I use SumUp to track all my cash purchases as well as enabling me to take payment from customers by card on their doorstep. I have written a post about it and there's been loads of interaction in the comments so it's worth taking a look there. As I say there, there is a small investment, £19 for the unit if you click on my link um, which is there, otherwise it's a bit more expensive. And for the card transactions, uh, there's a 1.69% that is taken out of your total sales cost. Um, so that works out at less than 2p in every pound, um, which is a lot better than some merchants because they charge you a flat, for example, 20p per transaction plus a percentage of the value. Um, so obviously with small transactions, that adds up quite quickly. Whereas, you know, when in a five pound transaction that might only work out to be five or six p so that's quite good um, that's the link to my facebook post on the on the subject and that's the link to buy the unit um, the point of that section was actually about cash sales the app that you put on your phone which is available for apple and android also allows you to track cash purchases so it just means that each month I can print out a report of all the transactions that I've put through there. Some of them will be card, some of them will be cash, but I do have a complete record of all of my customer orders at that point in one place, whether it was paid by card or cash. So I quite like it just for that reason. With my accounting background, it appeals to me. Avon order forms from customers. Keep all order forms um, and choose a numbering system. So, for example, I, mean, I wrote this a couple of years ago now and I haven't updated it, but 160001, uh, the logic is 16 is in 2016 and 0001, you can have up to 9,999 9, numbers before you go into 17, which would obviously be two, 2017. 
Um, if you number all the invoices before you give them out to people and make a note of who you give each number to, if they do happen to give the order form back without their name or address on it, you'll still know where they came from. Now, obviously, if you give out 100 brochures each campaign, then that might be quite a lot of extra work for very little return. Um, but it's just a, a call that you can make on whether you do that or not. I started out doing it. I don't do it so much anymore. Um, estimated figures using the government simplified expenses. Where I can, I have used simplified expenses. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on that when I go through um, the information below. But this is this link will take you to the government overview of the simplified expenses. That's mainly relating to mileage and working from home. So this is what you'll see on each on each monthly page. So bear in mind that some months will have two campaigns um, and others will only have the one. Now I'll pop onto one of the monthly pages in a minute, but I've split for this year and hopefully going forward if it works for everyone, um, I've put multiple columns in. So if you do multiple orders each month, whether it's in different campaigns or just multiple orders within a single campaign, you can track each order you do individually. So I'll, I'll make a few comments on that one when I get to it. So we've got turnover and sales. So this first box is sales value of customer orders. So that will probably be your day-to-day, -day, sorry, not day-to-day, -day, your door-to-door -door customers um, or any customers that you pick up anywhere else who look at a brochure, submit, submit their order to you and then you order it from there. This box is any market or event purchases that are made. Um, so in other words, you will probably have already ordered the stock in and you'll be making those sales to people from stuff you already have in stock. So that's those sales. The next one's similar, but internet sales. So eBay and Facebook and anywhere else that you might sell where you have physically bought the stock in and you're selling it from your pile of stock. Commission received from online sales. So this will be the commission that you've received at risk of repeating myself from online sales. Um, that will be the direct delivery ones. You don't receive the total amount from the customer. You literally just receive your commission on that sale. Um, but make sure you include it at the total commission price, I've mentioned that here, the full amount of commission and include the Avon processing fee below. And I'll, I'll highlight that when we get to it. Uh, the value of returns that you gave back to the customer. So this is if you've got a customer that didn't like something or something wasn't working, you have physically given back the sale price to the customer you'll put that in there. Make sure it's a positive number because I've already included it as a negative number in my totals. So you need to include that positively there. Um, and this is just the sale side of things. This is nothing to do with Avon just at this point. That comes in the next section. And if you're a sales leader, any commission and reward that you've earned from being a sales leader. Um, these numbers that I've put in here are just completely made up. Um, you'll see that I've left these numbers in for the monthly um, pages. Um, it's just so that we can see it tracking through. The actual spreadsheet that you download won't have any of these numbers in, but you can download the demo if you want to, which is this one with the numbers in. So now we're moving on to the cost of sales. This is the cost of your product basically your Avon invoice. So this first box, we've got the cost, the cost of the customer purchases for this month. So that's going to be your customer orders. Uh, it's what it costs you to fulfill. So you can see my test numbers um, 
I've got a sale there of £9.75 to a customer um, and they ordered that. I ordered it. It cost me £8.35. Like I say, those, those numbers are completely made up. Um, cost of stock items purchased this month. So in this example, I've literally I've purchased £76 worth of stock. Um, that needs to go in the month in which it's purchased, not the month in which you sell it. So there's not really any relationship between that number and these numbers up here. It's just what you've purchased. Any demos or samples that you've purchased this month? In reality, there's probably no difference between these two because at the end of the day, it's just stuff you've bought that wasn't directly for a customer order. But some people like to separate them out. Um, cost of sales tools. So that will be your brochures. Sorry, I haven't finished the, um, the descriptions here for the video, but I'll finish that in a minute. Um, any of your brochures, you know, any, any of the, any of that page that's in the back of the first lookbook, um, that you might need, um, brochure bags, uh, you know, the Avon bags, anything like that, that can all go in that line. Uh, cost of your personal purchases. I've put this in just so that you can put a number in and get a total that you can compare to your Avon invoice. It's not actually included in the totals of the spreadsheet. That box is missed out. And here is where you deal with your returns to Avon. So when you when you process a return to Avon and it shows up on your invoice, this is where you'd put it. And again, you need to include this return as a positive number because in my totals, I've already made it negative. So uh, here we've just got, if you put your total from your Avon invoice in here, then this box will show you um, what these add up to. And if you've got a difference there, then there's something else on your invoice that you haven't included in here. So it's just to make sure you know what that is and whether it should be included. So moving on to other business related costs. So here we've got mileage. Uh, this is what I mentioned just now about simplified expenses. At the moment, and it has been for quite a long time, it's set at 45 pence per mile up to 10,000 miles. Most of us aren't going to get over 10,000 miles, um, but let me know if you do because the calculation will change. So we'll need to make some adjustments. Most people are not going to reach that 10,000 miles. It takes some some driving to, to get to 10,000 miles in the year. Um, so hopefully that won't apply to you. But if it does, just let me know. Other travel costs. This could be train or bus if you don't have a car, and but you need to take public transport to get around or if you've had to pay for parking. Um, so that's fairly simple. How many hours did you work from home this month? So this is the other simplified expenses. I mentioned that here. Um, there are two ways of working out how, how much to include when you're working from home. There is one very in-depth um, calculation that you can do involving your utility bills, the number of um, rooms in your house, how much of the time or how dedicated a particular room is to using for your business and all that sort of thing. It's fairly in-depth and probably isn't going to make you much of a saving given the amount of time that it will take to, take to work it all out. It's easier just to use the simplified expenses. So that's what I've done here. So you, you put, pop in the green box how many hours you worked from home for this month. And you can just see underneath there is a number there that actually works out as the number of pounds that you can claim based on those hours. Um, so there are about four different boundaries. Less than 25, you, you don't get anything. So if I show you, if I put 16 in there, you can see zero. 
Um, I think the next boundary is 20, uh, yeah, 25. So if we put 26 in there, keep hitting the wrong button, you can see it's £10 a month. Now I think the next one's over 50. So if we've stuck 60 in there, you can see it goes up to 18. And the next one's at 101. So if we put 105 in there, you can see you can get £26 a month. So, what was that? I think that was 34 before. Um, purchase of other sales materials. So this will be any stickers that you use to stick on your brochures, business cards, leaflets, or anything that you've had printed from a third party supplier like Vistaprint. You might want to pop in there. Telephone costs. Um, generally, if you've got a phone that's specifically for your Avon work, you can include all the costs here. And that's the cost of the telephone itself. Telephone, I feel old there. Uh, the cost of the mobile phone, um, you can include in there. The cost of the contract or pay-as-you-go, top-ups, whatever, um, you can include in there. If you use your personal number, um, for which you have a contract, technically you are only allowed to claim for itemised expenses. So in other words, if you've looked at your mobile phone bill each month and you can see you spent £1.20 on a phone call to one customer um, and 50p on a text message to another customer, then you can claim those direct costs. A lot of people talk about a percentage of your personal contract. Technically, that's not allowed, but I do know that a lot of a lot of accountants advise that. So, on your own head, be it. But if you, that's the way you want to go, then you can do. Um, but if you do do that, I would suggest you have a backup for the percentage that you use. Um, so I'll leave that with you. Uh, internet and broadband costs. So this isn't included in your working from home allowance. So you can work this out. Uh, it's just a question of finding a reasonable method of dividing your costs. Over here, I've included an example of how I would do it. So I've worked out how many hours in the day or the month I would be awake. So per day, I've based that 16 on 24 hours of the day, less eight hours that I'm spending sleeping. So I'm awake for 16 hours and potentially using the internet. And to be honest, I probably do use it for 16 hours a day. Um, so per month, I've multiplied that 16 by 30, just as a, as a rough estimate of the number of days per month. And the working hours, this 34, I've actually picked up from over here. How many hours did you work from home this month? Just so that we've got some consistency. That works out at 7.08% of time I'm spending working out of the hours that I'm spending awake. Um, home broadband bill, 35. I have absolutely no idea if that's even close. We've got a package that includes Sky and phone and broadband and everything, so I have no idea what what it would cost us for broadband. Um, probably something I should know. Um, so that's worked out at 7.08% of that 35. Um, so if you wanted to change that to £20.99 pence, for example, then that would work out. I'll leave this calculation in there so you can have a play and see what you think. And then you just pop that number in there. Printer costs, if you've printed anything with your home printer, you can include any ink or paper costs. Um, if you use your printer for anything other than Avon, don't include the full costs. Um, and again, you can work out whatever split is most reasonable for that. Clothing, any, I say Avon branded slash business clothing. It doesn't necessarily have to be Avon branded. But if you've got a t-shirt that says, uh, ask me for your Avon brochure today, it might not be Avon branded, as in doesn't have the logo on it, but it's clear it's for business use. So you can include that there. 
uh, marketing and advertising. Um, but just one more note on the clothing. If it could be used for personal use, i.e. a pair of walking boots or trainers or something, or a rain jacket, which, yes, you might use for going and dropping off brochures, you could use that outside of that. So you shouldn't really be claiming that as a business expense because it's not solely a business expense. It could be used, you just going out into town, whatever. Uh, marketing and advertising. If you've spent any money on advertising, i.e. Facebook posts or Google ads, building and hosting a website, or if you've got the cost of a stand or an exhibition fee, um, then all that can be included in, in that box there. Postage, if you send any product out by post. Um, so for example, if you sell on eBay, um, then you can pop all the put costs in there. Accountancy and professional costs, if you pay an accountant to do your return from for you, for you um, then you can include that there. Um, bank costs and processing fees. So if you've got a bank account that you get charged for using, so that might be a business account, might be some other kind of personal account, um, or if you've got any merchant fees, for example, sum up, then you can include all your fees in there because that is an expense to the business. And finally, we've got the Avon direct delivery fees. So this is where I mentioned back up here about uh, your commission received online. Your full amount of commission is in there and then you'll include the fee that Avon charge you, uh, which is up to a maximum of £1.50 per order. Um, you can include that in there just to make sure that it comes off your costs. And then down here for each month, you will see a total, total figures for the month and for the year to date. So obviously in June, that will include your April figures, your May figures and your June figures. Um, so this is, this is just this month, this single month, but as each month goes by that will add up and you'll be able to see where you are for this tax year. So we've got the turnover of sales that is literally this section added up uh, minus your returns. We've got cost of sales so that is this section added up except for your personal purchases it minuses off your returns and obviously it doesn't include your total invoice. That's just for you to check that, that this number is correct. Uh, that will give you your gross profit. Realistically, that doesn't mean anything. Um, but you can just see what your sales less your... It's called direct costs are. And then your other costs, I've split into two. Uh, you've got administrative expenses which are all of these other, other bits down to accountancy and professional. And then you've got financial, financial expenses, which are these last two here. And then this gives you your net profit. Your net profit is what your tax is calculated on. So I've done a suggested savings for tax. If you earn over your personal allowance each year, um, then you will probably be paying tax. So, and this calculation is based on 20% tax rate. So obviously if it's, if you're in the 40% earnings limit, then basically double that. And that'll give you a good point to aim for. If you earn below, and you'll be able to keep track of that here, if you earn below that personal allowance limit, then you won't be paying any tax anyway, so you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so that's the end of that page. Um, and I've just realised there isn't a link to go back to the instructions there, so I'll put one in in a minute. So if we go to the April page, you can see that we've got... 
I've put in here that you might do up to five orders in a month. I've based that on the fact that there are sometimes five week months and you might put an order in each week. If you've got more or less than that, then, well, less than that isn't a problem. As you can see, I've just filled out three three columns here, so I've got two spares. So that's not a problem. If you've got more than that, you might have to double up. Um, and let me know if you have more than five orders in a month. Um, so it's all set out exactly the same way as what I've showed you on the other page. So you've got individual orders and you've got your month total at the end. So you can see what it looks like on a breakdown this way. When it comes to mileage is fine because you just need to include the number of miles you did each if this is a weekly order that you put in, then it might be just how many miles you do each week. And then that will total it up. For the hours, it's a little bit more difficult because the simplified expenses work it out based on the number of hours in the month. So if you calculate how many you've got per week, then this little calculation down here is a little bit more intense than just working out the total. Um, so what we do is we add it up. This figure won't mean anything until you get to the end of the month. So you've got your total number of hours that you've worked for the month. It will work out how much you can claim based on that. And then I've sort of back calculated that based on the split of the hours that you've put in for a weekly. Don't worry too much about that. I had to think about that before I... <laughs> before I put it in there just to work out how it was going to be best to do it but if you if you don't want to do that the other way of doing that is just go right I'm not going to calculate it on a weekly basis or an orderly basis I am literally just going to go I worked 34 hours in this month and it will say okay so your total was 34 that's 10 pounds so if you just want to fill in one box for that you can or you can, if you do your orders on a weekly basis then you can fill it out on a weekly basis um, what else have we got? Yeah, these other ones, you're probably going to want to just, um, well, that one might be 0.56, you know, they, they might be slightly different. Your broadband cost, that's going to be a monthly figure anyway, so you're going to want to just include that once. Um... And again, that, the rest of that's the same. You've got the breakdown per order, so you can see what your profit levels are for each order. Um, obviously, that will go up and down if you buy stock. Um, so then you've got the monthly total and you've got your year-to-date. These little dashes out here are just my calculation just to make sure that your because this is worked out calculating upwards and I've also calculated across just to make sure that the totals actually work. So don't worry too much about them. If there is a number in one of them, it means something's gone wrong somewhere. So let me know. Um, and these are all the same. So if we go back to the instructions here, so that will take you through each month as you go. And then down here, we've got an annual summary, which is a new one compared to previous spreadsheets. So I have tied this in to each of the individual month spreadsheets so that you can see on one page how you did over the course of the year. So for example, you've got your sales value of the customer orders Obviously, these are all going to be the same numbers because I've copied and pasted the same numbers into each spreadsheet, into each month sheet. So that's why they all look the same. They'll look different for you. Then we've got the total at the end. So that is your total uh, customer orders there. And then the next line will be your total market purchases. Next line will be your total eBay purchases. So you can see everything broken down. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we've got the summary 
the summary summary. So you've got your total sales for April, May, June, sort of just totals them up in a different direction. And then your total for the year is there. Um, cost of sales, gross profit, and your administrative and financial expenses, your net profit, and what you will expect to pay for tax based on a 20% rate. This column is slightly greyed out because I have taken it from, I have I've tied it into the March just to make sure and then done my little calculation just to make sure that what we're saying as your year to date figure at the end of March actually equals the total figure that I've got on here. So it's a bit of a check. Down here in the orange box, when you come to complete your self-assessment return, generally it will just ask you for two numbers. One is your total sales and the other one is your total costs. You can put a bit more information in there if you want to, but you don't have to and you can literally just put those two numbers in. So I've put them there to make it easy for you. So back to instructions. Uh, and then we've got completing your self-assessment by paper or online. Um, we've got the HMRC deadlines page there. So your paper return needs to be done by the 31st of October 2020. Yes, 1920 is the 31st of October 2020. And your, uh, if you're doing it online, then you've got until the following January. 2021. Um, if you're late, there's a hundred pound um, penalty, and if you go over three months late, then it's ten pounds a day. So I'd get on and sort that out if you get late. And there's a little link there to be able to estimate your um, charges or interest if you are late. Two links here, click here to make a payment and click here to submit your return. Just one point on making a payment, you can't any longer pay by credit card unless it's a business account credit card. So you can't pay with your personal credit card, but you can still do a bank transfer or pay by debit card. Um, there seems to have been a little bit of confusion uh, at the last return date. Um, people panicking they can't pay their return you can but you just need to use a debit card or um, or bank transfer so you need to make sure you've actually got the cash to be able to pay it you can't put it on credit unless you've got a business account set up a business account and a business credit card set up um, I think that's everything so like I say just take it through slowly, ask questions in the group, tag me if I haven't responded immediately. Sometimes family life gets in the way, so I try and get in there as often as possible, but I do end up missing things. And hopefully you found the video and the spreadsheet useful.